picking up from our last video, I have my jacket front with the extension, side, side back, and center back. Those need to be in the model. I also have my map, the sleeve, and the under collar, and then the back neck facing, the back lining, center back, the side back body, the front side body, the extra section of lining, and the front facing. Also, you don't have to do both of these. You can do one or the other, but one of those needs to be in the model. This one uses less fabric, Well, I guess it would be either this or that. But it will depend on the factory which one they would use. This is a little easier to make, so that's fine. Make sure that you've got notches somewhere between each piece and that they match. And I probably should put in one more notch between this pair near the bottom and make it a double notch so that anyone picking it up knows that it's the back. And this is on the fold. A notch for the tuck and a notch for the back neck facing to sew in. I could actually have put the dart there, but the reason there's a gap is because I've moved my center back so that it's on the fold, so the grain changed a little bit. And I've still got my lines on there. I should swap. No, I've already swapped them and I should delete them. So add notches and make sure you merge all of your lines. Combine all of your lines and clockwise in order always works the best. So I went opposite directions there because I was going clockwise both times. And I think we talked plenty about that last time. So I'm just going to leave the sleeve the way that it is now that I've got my matching additional like I've got on the side seam, but I do need to make a top collar. I'm going to start by offsetting my center back a sixteenth of an inch, so there's a little bit extra to ease in across there. It folds over better when you do that. Oh, offset even. Select the line to offset. I'm adding the line. The offset amount, I'm going to switch to value and say point zero. 625 because that's a sixteenth of an inch. And then remember, offsetting is that weird one where you have to say apply and OK or else it will disappear. And now I'm going to swap that. Sometimes I swap as I go if I know I'm going to remember, but since I'm not getting this all done in one sitting. I'm leaving the lines on so I don't forget my place. I also like to leave them on so you can see what I've done. The next one I want to adjust is this outer edge line where the collar, this is the back neck design edge of the collar and this is that front edge. So. When we're looking at that, 
this line is the same as this one so that you can see where it was. Maybe I should set it back there. Mod you don't have to do this. This is just so you can see. Modify set rotate. I'm choosing this line at the same point in that line. So this is where the collar came from. These two pieces sew together, but this one can be extended and be a little bit bigger across there so that it wraps around. So we're making a separate piece. I've extended the center back a little bit. So just this area and this area. And this is going to depend on your fabric. I I believe I added a fourth of an inch to this one. If your fabric isn't as heavy, you may only want to add an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to add an eighth of an inch in the corner area, but I'm... Hmm. This usually ends up a little too big, so I'm going to add a fourth of an inch to the new piece and when I've got this on the form and I've sewn it together I may check to see if I need to take some out of this piece and put it on the bias. So I'm going to do create line offset uneven this time. So from here I want it to be 0.25 and the amount depends on the book you're looking at, but also on the type of fabric you're using. And if it's a wool, how heavy. But this is something that after you've made a few samples, you'll have company standards and you won't have to guess at it. All right, that's 0.25. And this end, I'm going to go with Point one two five, and this one I'm going to stay at point one two five, and all right, I must have forgotten something. Oh, oh, yes, we went back to the other one because I didn't ever say apply. So we're starting that over. Remind me to say apply or to push the button and say apply. Create line offset uneven. Choose a point. It has to be the end point of the line. Point two five. Okay. Other end point of line point one two five. Okay. Now before I move on to the next step I have to say apply so it stays and then I'm going to choose my next point. Before I choose that I'm going to say okay and even cancel and just start over. So point to set offset uneven from point one two five and the other end zero. Okay, so those lines will just let extend out, but I need to say apply and okay. I believe we saved it that time, but I am going to adjust the endpoints. So, modify line adjust. Choose the line, choose the end of the line, choose the other line, pull the other end out. And now, and it's just amazing, I don't have to say apply. Should I say apply anyway? I'm getting paranoid. Okay, so now I can clip. I want to keep this 
and I want to keep this where it crosses over that one. So there they are. Now I'm going to swap those two. So I want these two to replace these two. And that was clockwise in an order again and it worked. So I can delete my inner lines when I want to. I think I'm about to that stage. Ah, but did you see that? I need to save this as. So file, save as, choose this one, and instead of under color, I'm going to change it to top color. And say save, yes to all. And then I'm going to piece to menu this one. And I'm going to bring them both back down. So the under color you can see inside there and the top color is a little bit bigger. While I'm here, I'm going to go into edit annotation. Say OK. I'm going to change the size of the print. And while I'm here, I'm going to change it so that it says collar, but I can't change the rest of it at the same time because they would they need to be different. So I'm going to say OK. So I've got my two collars and then I'm going to write under on this one and top on this one. Okay, this one's a little close to the edge, but it's okay. It'll have seam around it. Okay, so between these two, this one's going to be okay. I'm going to be. I can see my edge. Easing this one isn't going to be too bad, but easing this one. I want to make sure I have a single notch here and I want to make sure that I have those two. Well, I need a notch there. And when I choose where to put my additional notch, I'm going to line it up here. so that it's exactly lined off up and I'll put a notch Ooh. I want all my ease to happen between here and here so my notch is going to go right there so I'm just going to go ahead and add one and then zoom in to add the second one it's about an inch and a half. That's good. And I'm just going to split the line and measure it. So I'll put my a notch here. Modify line split. Verify line length. This one, that's 1.532. And maybe it would have been faster to do them both an inch and a half from the edge. You can do it either way. Create notch, 
right click in the water and say distance from point, choose, um, well that's interesting. Okay, that's better. Negative one point five three two. And while they're apart, I'm going to go ahead and add a notch here at the corner. So these two will line up. This will get eased in in that whole space these will match and then that will get eased in the rest of the way across. Now would be a good time to go ahead and delete those lines if you, oh, and I also need to add that one to the model. The file, model, add pieces. If there are any pieces you haven't added to your model yet, be sure and do that. And I'm going to choose both, but I think one's already there, yes. So now I have the rest of them. So all of the lines are, oh this one needs to be merged, modify line combine. If you have problems with your seam allowance, take it back off merge your lines and then put it back on. You want all of the lines to be continuous except at the corners. So check everywhere. This one I'm going to leave. If I have a problem we'll know where to look. That was lucky. And then I'm going to go ahead and add those two down here just by measurement. I think I'm going to go with four inches, maybe three, because I want it to be different from the rest. So just three inches and three and a half. Create notch, right click, distance from point, three. And same point. I didn't highlight that corner. Three point five. So I've got two notches, half an inch apart. You can make them a quarter of an inch apart as long as they're the same on the other side. And this time we're coming at it at a negative, negative three, and negative three point five. Okay, so those match. We can walk them. It wouldn't hurt to put a notch here somewhere. And if you haven't got notches on this one, go ahead and add them. 
but I'll walk these two. Verify walk pieces, stationary piece. I'm going to change direction and the walk piece and say OK. So our notches are nice and exact. There's a little bit of a space difference there, but that's sticking over that same amount, so I'm going to walk it back going the other way. And any ease will happen between this space. Verify walk pieces. Stationary line. It's going the way I want it to go. Say OK. Right click, change direction. Say OK. And now it's walking from this end. Oh, well. So I need to delete one of them and double check it again. But I'll come back to that. I'm going to wait till I get all the way to the bottom. Okay, those are. Modify, delete, notch. Hmm, which one was correct from the bottom? Either one. Delete, notch. I'm still going to walk it from the top and add it to the same place, but after I'm through, I'll walk it from the bottom again. Verify, walk pieces, stationary piece, OK, moving piece, OK, and then I'm going to stop it right there. And the notch is on the side, so I want to add it to the center. So I'm going to choose my center back lining. So now when I add my notch, you're right. We should just always do that by measurement on both of them and, and we'd be happier. Okay, so I didn't, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two lines. I haven't swapped this one yet though. Modify line, modify delete line, so that one. Oh, and I need to clear that. And apparently I need to merge that. Ah, oh, modify combine that, not merge. Okay. Verify walk. This line, say okay. This line, say okay. I told you I was going to do it from the other end last time, didn't I? But as it turns out, it's perfect from that end, and that's a very tiny amount that we're going to leave as ease. 
so we can be done unless you want me to do it again verify walk pieces change direction say okay choose the other piece change direction say okay that's the right click change direction so these line up exactly this notch is off by maybe a sixteenth of an inch and you'll be easing that in okay and I don't have to fix it but since I changed it I'm going to modify realign piece and on my facing pieces which is this one and this one they sew together at the shoulder because I want to make this line and this line shorter I'm going to swap those two lines that we made earlier because there's a lot of bias right here so traditionally we shorten that line modify line swap and I like to do it at the end because I forget whether I've done it so if you don't remember that from beginning pattern making typically when you make a facing you're going to shorten the long section and sometimes I'll shorten it even a little bit more maybe in a different area but that's something that you learn after you've sewn the piece together once if you don't do that it gets all ripply underneath on the inside delete line so we've done those two and I've got my map so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one I'm going to leave it on my side seam though. I wouldn't if I was working at a factory, but I want to remember that I've got extra there. And I want to delete the ones on the collar too. Okay. So I'll save them. And since I didn't change any names, I don't need to update my model. Save. Okay. And right here I forgot on these two pieces to put a notch here and there where they line up so I have to save them again okay so your jacket is finished And I'm going to go over how to turn it in. Please make sure all of the pieces are in the model. If you line it up similar to this and take a screenshot so you can send it to me, I will know that it's finished. If you have questions, go ahead and send me a picture with a text and I can answer immediately or if you want to just wait you can send that when you get home but take a picture of the screen then zoom in on it as much as you can and take a screenshot and send it to me or take a photograph and we've already saved it to our model but I would appreciate it if you would save it to the P drive so I can
touch it and play with it. In the computer, I don't want paper patterns. It's going to be easier to do this out of the pattern program. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. It says I have an unsaved model, so I want to save and exit. I have changes I want to overwrite. Okay, so now I need to open Explorer. When Explorer is open, I'm going to go to my file and you can see that I've got all of the pieces there. I don't want to change the name of it. And then I'm going to come down and open the P drive and you only want to work in zero share just like when you're plotting so highlight it um, say copy and then come over to zero share and then paste components make sure that you paste components so now that I've got it in zero share I can see that all of it's there and wherever I happen to be sitting, I can check your pieces. You'll need to, this one, it's not as important to do that with. It's more complicated, so I like to check them. But when you turn in your final projects, I will be checking your projects from zero share. And I don't know if I've shown you this before, but if I have a, a model that I don't have all the pieces in that I want, so I can double click on that from Explorer and I can see where all of the pieces are. And if I want to add pieces to it, I'll just click in that first square, push on the little dots, and it brings up a list of everything that is in the folder, all the pieces, and I can add a piece to it. So I'm going to add something that I, I don't need and it will be obvious to me. But I can even hold down the shift key and add a group of things and say open. And those are now part of my model. If I want to get rid of them, then I will highlight the first, the very first where the number is, and then push the delete button, and they're gone. So I held, I held down my left button on the mouse, highlighted the numbers at the very beginning, and then I just push delete. So those are gone, and I'm back with the ones I had, and I don't want to save the changes. So after you've done that, you're finished.